does this scare you? Well, wiring scares about everybody. But we're going to help you get rid of some of that fear with this video. We're going to show you where all those scary wires go. Now, one thing, when you find out that all the different wires have a different color code to each one of them, and that several of them are even the same all the time, like a bright red wire is usually one that's hot all the time, a black wire is one that's hot when the key comes on, the brown wires are ground wires. And all the wires that go to the switches usually have little tracers on it to identify them. Well, what we're going to do here, Wade is going to completely rewire a 63 Beetle. Show you where every wire goes in that car. And then when he gets done, then I'm going to take you further ahead and we're going to do a 67, a 70, all the way up to 79. Actually, we'll be showing you where all the different wires go and all the changes they made along the years. And so when you get done, your car is going to be covered in this. So pay close attention. We're going to start in the back of this 63 bug. We, as you can see, we've got the engine out. The wires that would go to the generator are already disconnected when we took the engine out. The coil wire and the oil pressure switch wire. The next step is taking the tar boards out of here so we can get to the wires that are behind them. To do this, we just bend back the tabs that are at the edges of the tar board. And then also there's spikes. There's about 13 spikes that come and through the brown back. wire that run from the front also up through this part of the roof that feed the dome line. But they're separate from the main wire loom. So to replace them with our new wires, we're going to have to attach a rope to them to our old wires before we pull them out. Tape them up good and snug. Them. So we can get the wires loose and we're at the point now that I'm going to enlist some help. My dad's offered to, to help with this and guiding the wires through the back as I pull the wires in the main wire harness out. We do, don't want to pull on the r small red wire or the brown wire at this point. Just the rest of the wires. Okay. You want to make sure you don't force them. It feels like it's snagged on something. Let the person in the back pull it back just a bit until it comes freely. Yep, there's our right tail light wires. Okay, now we're ready. And it goes on just about the same way the other one came off. Slides over into place. Make sure your arms parallel with the bottom of your dashboard. And this has a Phillips Put screw wires in one at a time. So you got them all up in there. Straighten them out a bit. Guide them through and push a little wire loom through. Now we'll get the wires out that we're going to be using in the back here. There we go. The first wire we're going to be putting on is this thick red wire with a black insulation. This is the one that runs between the starter and the voltage regulator, which is on top of our generator on this car. It's got a small eyelet on one end, which is what goes to the voltage regulator. the back of the solenoid on the starter on the same post that has our battery cable. It's held on by a 13 millimeter nut and a washer. I'll go ahead and put this on I'll our show car. you on a piece of scrap wire here. How that loops over, then hangs onto the end. Once you've got that, you can wrap it in duct tape, but wrap it lightly because if it wads up, it won't want to go through the tube at all. When you get that done, this is what we'll have. And then we can lube this with some goop hand cleaner. We can get some wire lubricant. We find this works pretty good. And once it gets up to this point, you might want to grab it with some pliers because it's going to make it a little bit harder to pull. And guide it in. Pull it slowly so the rubber has time to expand. And there it is at the other end. There we go. Just tighten this down tight. Sometimes if this is loose, you'll end up with a dim headlight. This gray wire 
attaches to the 58 terminal. And we also have this white wire with a red tracer that attaches back here on the 58B terminal. This is our instrument lights. Okay. Now originally our parking lights were hooked up to these 57 terminals down here. So they would come on with the first click of the switch with the tail lights. And then with the second click of the switch, they would go out and the tail lights and the headlights would stay on. The, the terminal and the next one after that is our black wire with a red tracer on our 54D terminal. Now we'll put this up in place. Now, in 1963, the Volkswagen wiring was still pretty basic. But in the mid-60s, everybody started becoming a lot more safety conscious, and so there were a lot more changes made in the cars in the 60s. And most of them had to do with wiring. So we're going to show you some of those changes that might actually apply to your car. Now, in 1965, they made the windows in the car bigger, and that in turn made the window post smaller, and so you could no longer run your wiring harness up through the roof. Now in 65 and later bugs, the wiring harness goes through the floor of the trunk, back in behind the hood spring here on the left side, and then it comes through a rubber grommet, the bottom of the trunk, comes in the car in behind the carpet on the left side kick panel, then goes through a little hole in the heater channel, then comes out and follows a groove down the side of the heater channel inside the car here a couple little metal clips that hold it in place if they're still there then goes all the way to the back and then goes underneath the inlet for the heater channel and then comes out on the other side and goes up through a hole in the quarter panel you can see the voltage regulator on 67 later cars is on the inside of the car we'll come back in a little bit and show you how these wires hook up and a couple more that break out right there now you can see, the, I'll stick that back on there, and now let's take a look at this emergency flasher. Now these flasher units actually came out in 66, and they were 6 volt, and then they went to 12 volt, 67, and then they ran through the early part of 69. Okay, now that's held on there with one screw in the middle, which actually grounds it. Let's take this screw out, and we can take a little better look at our wires. Okay, now I think you can see that there. I don't know if you can see these numbers on here or not, but all the numbers and letters for these wires are on the side of the case here. And if we turn this over here, we'll just run down through them. Now, starting with here, this the brown wire is a minus S on the number here. It's on the, the top and the side over here. And then the black and white wire is our left turn signal. And that's a VL what the marking for it is and then the green and black one here is our right turn signal remember that that's VR and then down the below screw here, that holds the end of the cable that opens the trunk that's attached to the lever inside the glove box so that screw has to come out of there so the cables free to move back when you pull the dashboard back Now we already have our speedometer cable undone and so from that point and you might have to push the vents down. They clip in the, the back edge there by the windshield. You might be able to have to push those through a little bit. Then you should be able to grab a hold of the dashboard and just pull it straight back. The whole dashboard should pull right back and lean right back out towards you there. Now with the dashboard out of the car, when we take a look at the back of it here and all these wires are together, it can look pretty scary. But actually, all these wires right here, this mess of wires here, is just a continuation of the wires we were just looking at on the fuse block earlier. And what I'm going to do is come around, and we'll just start going through the wires on the different ends of the loom that come into this. We'll start identifying the wires. And you'll see this is not nearly as mysterious as it looks. And all those things pretty much remain the same. One thing I need to show you, though, on 74, if you happen to have a 74, you may have this uh, special buzzer and relay combination that they put on them. And this thing had about 14 connections across the bottom of it here. And in this particular year, you had to be sitting in your seat, have your seat belt button, the car in neutral, and brake off and everything else, or the car would not start. 
And of course, when this thing went bad, your car wouldn't start, or any of the switches in your seats or whatever went bad, your car wouldn't start. Most of these things have been done away with. Yours might still be on your car. Even if it is, you're probably going to want to take it off. And all the other wires, except for the two starter wires, don't really have anything to do with the running of the car. But you have the two big wires that come from your starter. On the standard Beetle, they were red and red with a black tracer like we would expect for a starter wire. On the Super Beetle, one of them actually was a white wire with a red tracer. But anyway, these are the two wires that you're concerned about. On this one, there are terminals 14 and 16. And what you want to do is make yourself a little jumper like this. It has two spade connectors on it out of a heavy uh, gauge wire. And then you just want to jump that connection there where that's, where that's at here. And that, if I get them in the right spot here. Yeah, there we go. That connects those two wires together, and then you're good to go from that point on. You won't have to worry about all those connections. That should pretty much take care of all of your wiring uh, from the old ones right up to the new ones as far as where all your wires go. So join us now in our next video, and we'll show you what to do when you start having problems with your wirings, how to troubleshoot, how to check out your charging and starting system. See you then.